This program is brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. Faith worketh because you believe God loves you. Ooh, Jesus. Oh, God, I believe what you said in your word. By your stripes, I'm healed. I believe it, Lord, because I know you love me. Oh, God, I believe you'll supply all of my needs according to your riches and glory. I believe it because I know you love me. I believe, Lord, that I'm going to get a job to take care of my family. Oh, God, I thank you for it because I know you love me. Are you ready to come home? Grace Life Conference 2024, the reunion is coming. Creflo and Taffy Dollar will be joined by special guests Andrea Creighton, Gregory Dickow, Bishop Clarence McClendon, Inky Johnson, Michael Smith, Hezekiah Walker, and Brian Courtney Wilson. July 11th through 13th. Don't miss this experience that includes our annual mentality and ministers and leaders conferences. Text Race Life to 51555. This is your world, so let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know, you love is here to stay. Ooh, it's time we live a new life. Ooh, Let us love shine bright in you. We're saved by His grace, so we embrace your love today. See, everything that Satan does is to destroy that sense of God's love in you, that sense that you're to be loved. Everything, think about all the stuff the devil does. It is to destroy that sense that you are God's beloved. You got some pain? That's there because he wants you to eventually say, well, if God loved me, you got, you got a, a bill that's due? You, you hurt, you did everything Satan does is to destroy that sense that God loves you. Just get right down to the nitty-gritty. I don't care, but pick it out. Pick out something that he done did for you. Ultimately, it is to get you to question the love of God for you. That's what he wants. That's what he wants. Once you figure this thing out, you will see, you know, even, even when Jesus was baptized in the water by John the Baptist, and the voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Satan rejected it so much that in the next chapter and verse, he was led into the wilderness by the Holy Ghost, and the Satan says, if you be the son of God, he left the beloved out. I don't mind if you call yourself the son of God, but I ain't calling you beloved. But you are his beloved. Every action, everything Satan does, do you understand what this does to his operation for those of you who will receive this teaching? Do you understand what it does to his operation? That you're looking at him like, I know you did this because you're going to try, you're trying to get me to question God's love for me. I'm not questioning it. He loves me. He loves me with an everlasting, unending, awesome, passionate love. I'm the apple of his eye. When stuff goes wrong, you ought to start preaching love out your mouth. You ought to go to some stall somewhere and say, God loves me with an almighty, awesome, everlasting, anointed, powerful, endless love. He can't stop loving me. He decided to love me before I even got here. Don't you dare come trying to tell me to question what I already know. My God loves me emphatically. He loves me. You preach love and there'll be a power to conquer the trouble. No, we thought Satan, Satan's, Satan's trying to destroy my faith. No, 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 no. It's, it's, I have to, go to Galatians 5 and 6. He's trying to, he's after you believing that you're beloved. That's what he's after. You believing you're beloved. <laughs> now you can say to me, to tell me God don't love me. Oh, yes, he does. No, I don't. Yes, he does. No, I don't. Yes, he does. No, I don't. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. 
For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith worketh, watch this, by love. So the attack is not to destroy your faith. The attack is to try to destroy the thing that makes your faith work. Your faith ain't working because you don't believe God loves you. See, we spend so much time talking about, I love God. Don't you love God? We love God. No, 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 because I'm telling you, you don't even do that unless you believe God loves you. Faith worketh by believing the love. Faith worketh because you believe God loves you. Ooh, Jesus. Oh, God, I believe what you said in your word. By your stripes, I'm healed. I believe it, Lord, because I know you love me. Oh, God, I believe you'll supply all of my needs according to your riches and glory. I believe it because I know you love me. I believe, Lord, that I'm going to get a job to take care of my family. Oh, God, I thank you for it because I know you love me. I believe, God, that I'm protected and my wife's protected and my children are protected, Lord. And I thank you for your divine protection in the name of Jesus because I know you love me. I ain't got to say that 500 times. I just need to know that God loves me. And because he loves me, I have what I say. So... So Deuteronomy 1, 26 and 27 in King James, I'm trying to figure out how these guys got here. I'm going to read you something where somehow the devil convinced these people that God hated them. And when you're convinced that God hates you, you don't believe nothing he say. If somebody can convince you that God doesn't love you, you don't believe nothing he say. Verse 26, notwithstanding, you would not go up, but you rebelled against the commandments of God, Lord your God. What causes a person to rebel? When you look at people, you're trying to figure them out. What causes it? Verse 27, you murmured in your tents. What causes people to murmur in their tents like this after you did so much for them? And you said, because the Lord hated us. He has brought us forth out of the land of Egypt to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to, de to destroy us. That's what you believe when you don't receive the love. And most people that are involved in a lot of crazy stuff, the bottom line to that issue is they don't believe God loves them. They don't believe God loves them. They don't believe you love them. They don't believe nobody loves them. And that rebellion comes in strong because I have a hard time believing that God loves me because this is happening and this is happening and this is happening. Sometimes when you meet people, the greatest message you can give them is love from you to them. And then when you can love them, you can say, you have seen my love, but God loves you so much more. And that person would be so ready to believe in God because they saw God in your love while you were paying the debt. And you are obligated to pay this debt of love to people that hate you. You're going to heaven soon. Might as well go and get this thing right. I do not want to stand in front of Jesus Christ, the essence of God's love, and try to talk myself out of this. Because I can't love, like I just told you, without grace. <laughs> so you doing it out of your own ability, that's not possible. You doing it out of your human love, that's not possible. You're going in and say, Lord, I need you. Help me to love this situation. That's scary. That's painful. It was where I was broken. It was where I was messed up. And if you don't help me with this, I ain't got no kind of capacity to love except that which you have filled me with. So now that you love me. Yeah. Yeah. So... When you believe the love that God has for you, 
when you believe that you are his beloved, then you can love others and you can continue to pay the debt of love and you can be moved, watch this, with compassion. So what do we need to see in this world today? Compassion. What is compassion? That's love in action. We're not just conscious of God's love, but it moves into compassion. That's the, the debt-paying part. Compassion is, is deep sympathy and pity that moves you to action. It comes from your heart, not from your head. It's a component of love, not a component of our intellect. It is not compassion until it moves us to doing something. Compassion is the force behind paying that debt of love. Compassion is love in action. We've got to learn how to see people in their need and let compassion move us. Instead of get, getting deep, talking about God didn't call me to do that. I'm telling you, I'm so fed up with all these little church games, don't know what to do. I got so fed up, brother, there, I started I start to quit church. But I forgot I was the pastor. God, dog, it, I can't quit. <laughs> but if I was a member, I'd have quit church. You got to see people in their need, and then you got to let your compassion move you. Now, let's see what happened when Jesus was moved by compassion. Real quick, Matthew chapter 20, and these are all in the King James. Matthew chapter 20, verse 30, and then 32 through 34. Matthew chapter 20, verse 30, and then 32 through 34. Verse 30 says, And behold, two blind men sitting by the wayside, when they heard that Jesus passed by, they cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. Uh, and Jesus stood still and called them and said, What will you that I shall do unto you? They say unto him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. So Jesus had compassion on them. He, he, he knew he had paid the, 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 the debt of love. He, his love now is, is getting ready to go into action. And then he touched their eyes, and immediately their eyes received sight, and they followed him. We're always wondering, how did Jesus do this? And then we just kind of settle, well, because he's the son of God. Well, you're sons and daughters of God too. How come you're not doing it? Well, Jesus was the real son of God. Oh, you're trying to say you're not the real son of God? <laughs> he knew about this love. And compassion was released, and supernatural came at the same time, simultaneously. He touched their eyes. And they follow him. Come on, let's keep going. Mark 1, Mark 1, verse 40 through 42. Mark 1, verse 40 through 42. God says, son, I want, to, I want you to look at this because I came in the form of a man to show you how to walk this life. And you, you guys keep finding excuses not to walk it. You keep finding excuses for the supernatural not to show up. Isaac was a child of Sarah. Sarah got pregnant through the supernatural. Ishmael came through natural means. Isaac came through supernatural means. You and I have been born again. We're children of the supernatural. And there came a leopard to him, beseeching him and kneeling down to him and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus moved with compassion. He moved with what? He moved with compassion. He put forth his hand. He touched him, and he saith unto him, I will be thou clean. And in verse 42, and as soon as he had spoken, as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he was cleansed. Every one of you in here, I dare you in your everyday living, that when you encounter situations that need some compassion on it, You've heard this teaching. Let this move of God begin. 
What are we waiting on? Let it begin. Let it start today. Let it start in your house. Let it begin now. I dare you to lay hands on somebody in public. Don't wait till you get to church. See people in their needs. Be moved with compassion and let this move of God begin. Mark 6, 34. Mark 6, 34, and then Mark chapter 8 and 2. Mark 6, 34, and Jesus, when he came out, saw much people and was moved with compassion towards them because they were as sheep not having a shepherd, and he began to teach them. He was here. Jesus says, I saw people that, 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 that they, didn't, they weren't getting no teaching. They, they didn't have a shepherd. Oh, and he says, I was so moved, I taught them. He says, I taught him anything because compassion demanded for a debt to be paid. Oh, my goodness. And then in Mark chapter 8 and 2, Mark chapter 8 and 2 in the King James, he says, I have compassion on the multitude because they have now been with me three days and they have nothing to eat. My compassion will cause something supernatural to happen. Multitude of people, my compassion will cause something to happen. And the multiplication of fish and bread comes when love is the foundation of your move. Matthew 14 and 14. Matthew 14 and 14. Oh, my God, get this, church. Get this, get this, get this, get this. And Jesus went forth and he saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion towards them. And notice, he began to heal the sick. Wonder what would happen when you came around people who were sick and you were, you were moved with compassion out of love, not out of, you know, oh my God, you know, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I'm anointed to do this. Get out of the way, girl. You ain't ready to move. <laughs> just, it, it don't take all that. It just takes somebody who's so full of love that can't stand to see this suffering that they're moved with compassion to pay down a debt because nobody else in the room doing it. They're still talking about the medicine and the new crazy. I'm going to put my hands on you because I love you. And I, I, I shall be healed in Jesus' name, not so I can become popular, not so people can start talking about how anointed I am, but I want you out of, my, out of love. Out of love, I pay down the debt, be healed. I'm available hands. I'm available hands. We live in a generation too scared to do stuff like this because you ain't never seen it before. You ain't never seen it before because people's love have waxed cold. But this, this, is, this is where you're getting ready to go. I hope you're ready for it. Matthew 9, verse 35 through 38. Matthew 9, verse 35 through 38. Hope you're ready for it. I was reading this. I was... Uh, I was uh, reading, reading, reading over this sermon this morning. I'm like, well, man, I'm going to go do this thing, and then I'm going to holler at the end. I ain't doing that. God said don't do that. <laughs> don't holler at the end. Just, just read scriptures. Don't holler. I holler when you go home. Don't, don't holler. <laughs> I need these people to take this serious. They got to get this. He says, I'm ready to go. I'm on a time clock right now. And whoever going to go, going to go. And if everybody else stand back, and if you're the only one that go, you're the only one to get to this, that every day of your life, you make it a point, every day of your life to say, God loves me and I know it. Oh, thank you, Lord. I know you love me today. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, I'm available today. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, God. It's going to be people you least expect. Nobody expected for David to be the king, but God knew. Hallelujah. Praise God. Samuel knew. Praise the Lord. Don't, don't look at who you are, where you come from. All you got to do is be willing to believe the love. Say, ain't nobody else around. Might as well be you. Here I am, Lord. Use me. Here I am, Lord. Send me. <clears throat> Matthew 9, 35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Look at that. But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted, and they were scattered abroad as sheep, having no shepherd. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, 
But he said, the issue is laborers. We ain't got nobody willing to work this thing. Laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he'll send forth laborers in his harvest. God says, I need somebody to work through. You sitting around saying, it's the preacher. It ain't the preacher, it's you. The anointing is not just going to be in the pulpit. It's going to be amongst the people. It's going to be amongst the congregation. It's going to be amongst the believers. Quit looking at the preachers. I dare you to lay hands on the sick. I dare you somebody die in your house and you see them flatline and you know it wasn't, it wasn't God's will for them, get them back up. Well, what do I say? Whatever you, whatever's on your heart, get up. That'll be good. <laughs> Quit trying to be religious. Don't be talking about risest thou theest nowest. Elizabeth ain't in the room, so quit speaking Elizabethan language. Hey, get up. Ralph, wake up. You want to see some miracles? Then make yourself available. Be a laborer. Be ready for God to use you. Only thing you need to do is, is, is to fill your consciousness with the sense of God's love. This thing about shake Oh, glory to God. Boy, we hit the bedrock here. Now, the deal is who amongst you will begin to walk in this? Or is it just another church thing? You know, well, that's the message today. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, oh Pastor really menaced me today. I'm not with all that. Tom Foolery, what you gonna do with it? What you gonna do with it? You got your own pastor ready to quit church. What you gonna do with it? <laughs> Aren't you tired of all the games? Aren't you tired of all the phoniness? Aren't you tired of all of the unbelief? Aren't you tired of all of the sickness? People being sick, people being hurt. Aren't you tired of 20 year olds killing themselves? Aren't you tired of all of this? And here you are, vessels meet for the master use. And you still won't do nothing because it's just a church thing. Well, praise the Lord. Let me go and see if I can beat the traffic. Praise God. See y'all later. Praise Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Bow your heads and pray. So, Father, we've located the power. We've located the power. We've located the supernatural flow. The rubush. We've located the supernatural faucet. And yet we know that in our own ability, we will fail. Trusting our own self, we will fail. Now unto you, who's able to keep us from failing and falling, we call on your grace. We call on your grace. Help us, Lord. Help us. Jesus canceled the debt owed for our sins. Love is the currency of the kingdom, and that's what we owe now. Discover this and more in Creflo Dollar's three-part series, The Infinite Debt of Love. We will never be done with paying love to each other. This debt of love has to be paid to humankind. People you don't like, people you can't stand, people you don't know, people you mad at, and you will not be able to pay this debt because it's gonna take the grace of God for you to make the payments. There is something about paying the debt of love that will release an anointing to take care of all of the other debts you have in your life. For a love gift of 20 US dollars or more for CDs or 
30 U.S. dollars or more for DVDs. Secure your copy today. Call the number on your screen, scan the QR code, or visit CreflodollarMinistries.org and click eStore. Be transformed by love. Your story is just beginning. The 2024 Change Experience Tour is where you need to be. Meet Creflo Dollar on Friday, April 26th at the Centennial Memorial Temple in New York, New York to be renewed by the word and reminded that you are made new in Christ. I would definitely encourage anyone who can get there to attend the Change Experience so that their life can be changed. Going to this experience heightens our belief and deepens our belief system in what is needed for us to grow closer to the Lord. It's a great experience. It blesses your spirit. It's just a, a welcoming atmosphere. And God is in, a, is, is in the midst of it, and it's great. It's awesome. Your story isn't over. RSVP today. Text CHANGE2024 to 51555. Visit CreploDollarMinistries.org or scan the QR code on your screen. Let the new chapter begin. The 2020 Vision Partner Program at Creflo Dollar Ministries is more than a program. No matter where you are on your personal journey, the Word of God can reach you. At work or simply needing to hear from the Lord, tune in to World Changers every Sunday at 10 a.m. or restream at 2 p.m., 6 p.m., and 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Text WATCH NOW to 51555 or visit worldchangers.org for more information about services and stream times. We're in this together. No matter where we are, we are World Changers. See you online. Salvation is the beginning of a new life for a believer. It is from this point that we can move into the fullness of who God has called us to be and see the manifestation of the finished works of Jesus. It is one of my greatest pleasures to help people uh, to understand who Christ is and to lead people to Christ. If you would like salvation today, pray this prayer with me. Very simple prayer. Heavenly Father, I believe in Jesus. I believe that he died, that he rose again, and that he lives today. Come into my life. Save me. I receive you as my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, if you prayed that prayer with me, that's how simple it is. Welcome to the family of God. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe. The preceding program was brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries.